Our children these days want to be raised very differently to the way their parents were raised, whereas the parents want to raise children the way they were raised. So that really results in a conflict. Also, this generation with the access that they have to technology, gadgets, numerous extracurricular activities, and also the academic pressure, have very little time to communicate with their parents. And so this barrier continues to grow. So how can one actually break this barrier? How can one actually communicate with uh, one's children better is really what the crux of this book is. So well, one can talk to children, but then they don't really have the time for you. Uh, one can ask them to read books, uh, but that's easier said than done because data from England, for example, shows that 30% of children uh, at best read and 17% of children are actually embarrassed if their friends see them reading. Uh, one can talk to them about one's own experience, but then as we know, uh, that turns out to be a sermon and, and we should perhaps uh, remember what um, Charles Wadsworth had said. By the time a man realizes that maybe his father was right, he usually has a son who thinks he's wrong. So what I've tried to describe in this book uh, based on my experience as a parent and as a pediatrician for 20 years is how one can actually try and build a relationship, build a bond, and I've shared through anecdotes, through lots of stories, through examples, how one can actually uh, try and understand how a young person's mind works. And, and I've given examples, for example, with, with our son, when he wanted to buy an iPhone, I thought it would be a great opportunity really to talk about the highs and lows of Steve Jobs' life and determination. Or when we were seeing the Soccer World Cup uh, inauguration in South Africa, um, it was a great opportunity really to talk about uh, forgiveness and Nelson Mandela because they can't really be a better example than that. And uh, so this is what this book is about. It's about 18 values. It's about uh, 50 do's and don'ts. And uh, I've tried to uh, share a little bit of personal experience, but not too much because I was uh, reminded of what um, Mark Twain had said. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. By the time I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. So this book is dedicated to all the children I've had the privilege of uh, looking after over 20 years, and I hope that it's of benefit to both parents and children. Thank you. Charan and I are very, very, we love kids a lot. That's number one. Number two is we are perfectionists and we want to be really careful before taking the step. So I want to read through everything and I thank Dr. Sibyl for uh, you know, writing this book before we had kids so now we can bring up our kids uh, really well. My inspiration is my sister-in-law Sushmita who's an amazing mom. I give it to her. She's like one of the best moms ever and she's the best homemaker and Charan, thank you for having such an amazing sister so then we can learn from her. And also my cousin Sinduri, she heads the polar hospital operations in Chennai and the whole region and she has a two-year-old kid and she's able to do an amazing job with work-life balance, you know, her home and the kid and it's just amazing. So, you know, I use her as a benchmark when I have my children. But things are so different from the time, you know, I was a child and to now. Dad wouldn't allow, you know, boys to call us or we didn't even have a cell phone till we were in, till we finished school, that's like till the 10th or 12th and then after that, you know, I was exposed to America, so it was that bad. So anyways, it, it was a great experience also, but um, I was wondering, will my kids have the same experience as I did or will it be different? Today kids have, um, kids younger than me, even babies have social media accounts you know so that's the world is changing i mean uh, moms from the time they conceive to their bumps showing to everything is out there for everyone so these kids are born stars before they even come and come onto this planet it's amazing how the world is changing so my dad's thing of not letting any boys talk to us or this or come call home and all that doesn't work anymore so um, I guess there's a lot to read about, you know, how to bring up kids today and uh, I really want to talk about children's health because I've seen a lot of kids today are chubby when they graduate and you know, your weight, your looks, all that is becoming so important. So um, I feel that every parent should look into their kids' health 
get them vaccinated, get them, um, get them right, get them in the body shape that's good for them. Because, you know, this world is not so nice anymore, you know, where we can accept everyone. Counsel them correctly, tell them uh, what it is, and um, be truthful with your, uh, with your kids. You know, previously it used to be like, uh, spare the uh, rod, spoil the child. That's it? Yeah. So now, if today, if anyone hits their kid, the kid will turn around and say, I'll call the cops on you. It's that bad. But anyways, um, obviously none of us want to hit our kids or do anything like that. I think it's very nice for parents to become friends with their kids. And I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm learning it. I'm, you know, trying to absorb as much as possible before we have kids. And we do extensive reading and research. And I know so many couples that have gone abroad to take classes even before they had kids. And it's so important to be aware of what you're getting into. There's someone else you're bringing into this planet. There's someone else you're bringing into this world. And you need to do justice and it needs to be the correct time. And after they come in, everything. So I was with Deepak Chopra a few months ago. And he was telling me that, you know, you can change the genetics of the child when the child is in your womb. And I was like, wow, if we can actually, if we have the power to do so much, it's just amazing. So anyways, thank you, Dr. Sibyl, and thank you all. I think you really need to concentrate on your kids.